So, it's that time of the year again. Nando V Movies has started another series, this being one musical scene. It's a series that anybody can participate in, and if you want to make a video, just message Nando on Twitter, which will be linked in the description. Now, music is such a crucial part of the visual medium. Whether it's a score, a song, whatever. Music helps tell the story and should complement the visuals we're watching. Can you imagine watching Guardians of the Galaxy's opening sequence without that needle drop of come and get your love? or watching the What's Up Danger scene in Into the Spider-Verse without What's Up Danger? There are an endless amount of examples I could use in film, TV, or video games where the music quite literally helps make the scene. Some musical scenes I was thinking about was Something Stupid in Better Call Saul, Hello Stranger in Moonlight's Diner Scene, Married Life in Up, and way more. But then I finally decided on the perfect sequence that utilizes music to enhance their scene. In Daredevil 2003, when the villainous Kingpin, played by Michael Clark Duncan, is revealed, Lap Dance, played by Nerd Plays. I'm an outlaw. I'm an outlaw. This song is used to show that Fisk is an outlaw. What a true work of art. But in all seriousness, I chose, with the help of you guys, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head by BJ Thomas in Spider-Man 2. But before I get into it, I just want to say if you guys enjoyed today's video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe. And if you want to stay updated with me and my content, follow my Twitter, at Matthew. Alright, let's get into it. Spider-Man 2 is one of my favorite movies of all time. I know, a very unique take. But one of the main reasons why I love it so much is how unapologetically Sam Raimi it is. To the camera work, the really awkward comedic scenes, the horror, the cheesiness, the campiness, the heart, it's just amazing. To me, the main thematic element of the film is whether it's wrong or selfish to put yourself first. Throughout the film, Peter is struggling with his responsibilities by saving people as Spider-Man whilst living a normal life as Peter Parker. A day in the life of Spider-Man consists of saving kids in the street, stopping armed criminals in high-speed chases, and saving people in a burning building. How does this taxing life as Spider-Man affect his life as Peter Parker though? The movie heavily explores this idea, which is why I love it so much. He's missing plays from MJ, he's late for work, his friends despise him, he's about to fail his classes at college, nothing is going right for this guy. This depresses Peter. But is he right to feel this way? To feel sad that helping people is getting in the way of his life? I mean, isn't that selfish? Well, that's the main question. I mean, we all know the famous line, with great power comes great responsibility, meaning that since Peter has the ability to help people, he should always help them no matter what. He has to use his gifts responsibly, which, in his eyes, is to use his superpowers to constantly help those in need, even if it's a hindrance to his life. Eventually, Peter reaches his breaking point. His best friend utterly despises him, the love of his life is constantly let down by him, and wants nothing to do with him. He can barely make any money, and he's about to fail college, all because he's trying to do the right thing and put other people before him. He starts losing his powers due to his depression and lack of a will to be Spider-Man, which then culminates in a heartbreaking scene where Peter converses with Uncle Ben in his dream. He essentially tells Ben that he can't do it anymore, that he wants a life of his own, that he is Spider-Man no more. Peter throws his Spider-Man suit into the dumpster, walks away, and we fade to black. Finally, after all that, we get the masterpiece of a scene that is raindrops keep falling on my head. I mean, what a transition! With all that depressing stuff that gets thrown at Peter, you kinda just expect it to keep building on that and for the film to progressively become more depressing, so for it to fade to black and instantly hear this happy, calm song with a ukulele playing, it's kinda refreshing. But also important, we need to understand the stark difference between living as Peter Parker and living as Spider-Man. We need to see how much happier he is so that we can struggle even more with the idea that it's selfish to leave Spider-Man behind so he can focus on his own personal life. And to finally get to the scene itself, it's just hilarious. Like, in order to demonstrate Peter being happy, Sam Raimi just has Toby walking like an absolute dork in public because the character is just that happy. I also love how he's just walking in a completely plain field, and for some reason he just trips. Like, there was literally nothing for him to trip on, but Peter's luck is just that awful. And the continuity errors are also just hilarious, like, Sam Raimi is really just having the time of his life here. Peter trips here in this park 
with lively scenery in the background, this couple walking behind him, and when it cuts to the next scene, it's like he's in an entirely new area. Like now there's a truck behind him, not to mention all the extras are just staring at Toby and laughing at him. It's just hilarious. And as he's getting up, we get two separate cuts of him trying to get up for some reason. I honestly have no idea why that's in there other than the fact that it's just hilarious and it makes Peter look like 10 times more of a dork. As he keeps walking away, I love that the pedestrians just keep staring at this random guy walking in the street. Like they're not even trying to hide the fact that they're just staring at him. And it's all of the extras in the background too, it's just so funny. Then we get some other really endearing stuff like Peter tightening some bolts on his bike wheel just for it to fall off the balcony and make his neighbor angry. It's just so charming seeing how regular of a person he is. That coupled with the music, it just feels so wholesome. I also like that we see Peter actively avoiding crimes happening in the city. It's visually shown as Peter looks at the police chasing something and he just decides to take a gigantic bite of a hot dog just to show how little he cares at this point. He gets to finally focus on his grades, participate in class, and impress his professor. One, two, three electron volts. Man, that guy did not like that Peter said that for some reason. And my favorite part of this scene, as Peter walks out of class, he gets congratulated by Professor Connors, and we just get this freeze frame of Peter looking like an absolute dork. I think the first time I watched it, I thought my DVR froze or something. And as I rewatched it when I got older, I think I was just confused. <laughs> but I love it so much now. It's so campy and silly. We seriously don't get scenes like this in today's movie industry, and it's kind of saddening. This scene shows me so much of the director's personality, and it's hard getting that nowadays. I love this sequence so much. It's actually the scene I revisit the most in Spider-Man 2. Every now and then when I'm feeling a little down, I go on YouTube to Google this scene. Watching this scene makes me feel just a lot less alone with whatever stress or problems I'm dealing with. It kind of reminds me to not take things so seriously, and when something doesn't work out, you can kind of spin it in a comical way. Like, wow, I just dropped a freaking bicycle tire on my neighbor's car like how could things get any worse i don't know you can just kind of laugh at your own problems sometimes and you'll feel better the whole sequence is just so warm as peter's all dressed up nicely the scenes are all shot in the middle of the day it's lit very brightly and everything feels so cozy and warm sam raimi really found the perfect song to accompany this raindrops keep falling on my head immediately elicits a warm feeling after a slew of troubles it fits perfectly with the movie as raindrops figuratively keep falling on peter but it won't be long until happiness arrives for him it's about not letting the blues consume you it's just a reminder to keep going it's such a happy and endearing song that talks about a lot of sad things, which is basically what Spider-Man 2 is in a nutshell. A movie that has a lot of sad things happening, but is portrayed in a light that can still be seen as fun. In conclusion, the raindrops keep falling on my head scene is one of my favorite scenes in any superhero movie to be honest. It's very subversive as there's such a complex question going on of is it wrong to focus on yourself instead of constantly trying to help people? Peter's going through such a depressive spout, everything's going wrong for him, and we just cut to such a goofy, happy, hopeful, and just odd scene. It's just so like rare to get a scene like this in a movie nowadays. Something that's a little weird, campy, unique, and just hilarious in an unconventional way whilst forwarding the narrative in an endearing and hopeful way. I wish more superhero movies had stuff like this because a lot of them are purposely trying to feel the same, which is really unfortunate because it removes a lot of interesting style the movies could have. I just mention this because it makes me appreciate this scene all the more as it really does feel so rare nowadays. But that is my one musical scene. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and let me know what you guys think about this sequence from Spider-Man 2. Do you not care for it that much? Do you think it's outdated? Or do you love it like me? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know. And what are some other pieces of music or songs in the film that are really memorable to you? With that being said, it'd mean a lot if you guys could leave a like and subscribe as it really helps me out. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.